our site has been resurrected, and now let's start to talk about widgets. Uh, now, uh, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the front end. I'm on visit site. I'm I'm looking at the site. Remember, there's front end, which is what the site looks like to people. And then there's the back end in the dashboard. I'm on the front end for the moment. And do you see on the sidebar here, this particular site has a particular design, which is known as a theme. This theme has a sidebar. On the left side, it's got this white sidebar. Some themes might have it on the right, might, some might have it on the left and the right. Some might have a sidebar on the bottom, a footer, or at the top. Some, you know, some sites could have four, top, left, bottom, right. Uh, this particular theme has one sidebar to the left that I, that I see here. Usually the sidebar is where we have widgets. Uh, widgets are these that we're seeing here on the left. We're seeing search, recent posts, recent comments, archives, meta, etc. Uh, these are like little... Uh, little extra features. These are features. These are things that we can do that your site has, that, you, that your site can do. For example, under meta here, um, this has site admin to log in and to log out. That's pretty useful because if I've got this site on the internet, I want to be able to log in. Actually, no, that's not useful at all because if you can click that to log in, so can anyone else click that to try to log in. So the default widget is the login widget right here, which everyone will see if you don't take it out. So we've got that kind of widget we'll look at in a moment, and other ones such as to play a video <coughs> there, or maybe to have, uh, I don't know, a chat feature. So widgets are sort of related to plugins. We've talked about plugins a bit. We'll talk about them more today. Plugins and widgets basically are extra features we add to your site. I don't want the feature for people to be able to log in. I always have the ability to log into my site, however. It's on a previous note somewhere, and you should make another note. that The, the way to always log back into your site, if there's no button, you can always log into it by going to the <coughs> address of your site at the very end of your address, slash wp-admin. So if I've got victor.com, slash wp-admin. If I've got John's Bakery, it's johnsbakery.biz slash wp-admin. That's easy. That could be a security liability, because if every WordPress site has that login screen, that means anyone can figure out where your login screen is. Later on, we're going to talk about having, instead of victorsbakery.com slash wp-admin, we're going to have something like victorsbakery.com slash secret slash wp-admin. We're going to obfuscate it. We're going to hide it so that it's not on the obvious place. We'll talk about that later. That's one of the aspects of security that we need to talk about. One aspect of security we can deal with right now is to change this widget so that there's no welcome, you know, welcome mat for people to walk right into our site. <coughs> Let's go back to the dashboard, hover over appearance, and select widgets. This particular theme then says widget area. Add widgets here to appear in your sidebar. Depending on your theme, we may have one called sidebar. We may have one called footer bar. We may have one called widget area 1, widget area 2, widget area 3. It depends on your theme. But this screen, Appearance and Widgets, is where you manage this stuff. Notice I see search, recent posts, blah, 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 meta. That's exactly what I'm seeing when I visit site. I'm seeing under the menu, search, recent posts, blah, 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 meta. So if you click the triangle to open search, there aren't any particular extra options here. It's simply, here is the widget that gives the site the ability to search. So built in, someone can click there and search. That widget is just built in, search. 
there it is, search. If I don't want people to search on my site, I can delete it. I don't recommend that. You don't want people, you don't want to annoy people and you don't want people to lose uh, the, the, the content of your site. You want people to search. I want to get to the thing I want quickly. That's search. I could, if I wanted to, change its name. So don't do this, but let me show you this. Search it now. If I save that, again, you don't have to do this, but if I do it and I go back to my front end, now it says search it now. Instead of simply search, I can make it say something else if you want to change the title. If you don't put anything, the default title is there, which is just search. So the search widget doesn't have anything extra. Recent posts, I can put a title if I want. It shows my five most recent posts. And maybe display the date? Sure, let's see what that looks like. If you make a change to anything, you have to click Save onto the widget. And then you want to visit site. And this, for example, now under Recent Posts, it says the name of my post and the date. So these widgets have different capabilities, a couple different options. It depends on the widget. If you look down on the meta widget, meta on the on visit site, meta widget has log in, log out, entries RSS, comments RSS, and WordPress.org. It has all of these things. And I want to remove the login and the log out, but notice the widget doesn't have that option. It's all or nothing show all of those items in the meta area or none of them. So that's a liability, like I said, I don't want people to be able to log into my site. So I want to remove this widget. A couple ways to do it. You can very easily click delete and it'll do it. Or you can drag it to the left over here. Just click delete and it's deleted. Now I no longer have the meta widget on my site. If you drag it, uh, you have to drag it over to the left side to, to get it out of the <coughs> out of the. I'm with the meta, uh, no, just drag it anywhere, and then it'll dro drop it, and then it'll go away. So this screen shows us what are our widget areas and what are the active widgets. This area on the left side sits kind of divided in, into two columns. On the left side here is available widgets. These are all the things I can add to my site, sidebar, such as a calendar. So if I wanted to add the calendar to my sidebar, all you have to do is click and drag it and then put it in the order that you want. Let's say I want the calendar before the search. Just drag it over. clicked and held calendar and dragged it above search. There's just the option to give it a name or it'll just be called calendar. There's no other option. Just save it, visit site, and see what kind of calendar you get. So I dragged the calendar above the search and therefore it showed up above the search, but it's still below the, ma the, the menu bar the nav bar. In this theme, the nav bar is higher than the widget area. So I have a calendar, and I see the calendar. This calendar, however, is not that good. It's not about, you know, like booking a, a table or you know, checking your itinerary. It's not that complex at all. It's simply a list of the days this month that you added a blog post. We added a blog on the 11th. That's why it's highlighted. It's not telling you today's the 11th. No, it says that's when a, a post was added. If we add one today, it'll highlight, you know, it'll highlight today the 25th. So this calendar is just at a glance for people to see these are the days that the author was active and wrote a blog post. 
and I don't see a button for next month, previous month, uh, either because we don't have any more months or we don't have any blog posts. So it's not the kind of calendar that you might think. It's just a list of the days that you made a post. And let's say uh, that we customize this by adding some text. Monthly posts. So the word monthly posts will appear on the calendar. We've customized that widget a bit. Remember to click Save. And now that widget area has monthly posts and the month. It's customized. Very basic customization. Some widgets are very complex, especially like the social media widgets. We wanted to display Facebook and Twitter, and we wanted to display three tweets and two Facebook posts. You know, some widgets can be complex. These ones that are built in are kind of basic, and so not a lot to customize. Yes? Is this where we would put calendar of events or? In the widget area, yes, but most likely not the, this calendar widget. Most likely, we would need a different widget, and we'll get to that in a moment, but that's usually, we usually get more widgets by adding more plugins. We can get the calendar plugin, which gives us the calendar, the you know super calendar widget, and then we can add it to the sidebar. We'll do something like that in a little bit. And so I've added a new item to my widget area, and I've customized it. Now let's say I no longer want to display the calendar, but I don't want to lose its customization. If I were to click delete, don't click delete, it would delete it at this moment and it would be gone. No undo. Anytime you delete it, or you drag it back to the, to the available widget area, it goes away and all customization goes away, and there's no undo. A better thing would be is, do you notice that there's an area, it's not obvious, but if you, if you click Available Widget, this triangle, it closes it and opens it. There's an area called Inactive Widgets. Drag widgets here to remove them from the sidebar, but keep their settings. So if I want to remove a widget but not delete its customization, instead drag it into the area of an active widget. Now be careful, make sure that it's dragged over to the dotted lines. If you don't see if you don't see uh, if you don't see dotted lines like see there's no dotted lines, it's not gonna work. You have to drag it over so that it's dotted lines. And sometimes you have to wiggle it around to find it, but there's you should have dotted lines right there. Now that I dragged it over uh, on visit site I no longer have the calendar. It's gone. But it's saved to my inactive widget area, so all of the customization I did is still there. Maybe I don't want the calendar this month, but I want it next month. How do I bring the calendar back now? Drag it from inactive widget just back to the widget area. And it's back and it's forth. I don't have a calendar in inactive widget. You have to drag it down there. Well, it's not there. Because you have to drag it over. Yeah, we did. We, we did, did it. It's not here. It disappears. Am I into It's not there. I dragged it and it's not there. Yeah, I said a moment ago when you drag it over, you have to make sure you're dragging it on the dotted lines. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you don't have the dotted lines and you let it go, it's going to disappear completely. Yeah, look at Well, if it's gone, it's gone. No, but we, as we did it in the dotted lines. See, it is. And then it comes back. Yeah, but see, now when I come back, it will be back, it will be back out. Well, you don't want to do this kind of back here. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just that um, sometimes it's, if you just go back and forth, this one doesn't change. Okay. Okay. So okay. Okay. So you just need to um, refresh the screen instead of pressing back and forth. So how do you do it? Yes. Are you? Refresh the screen. Refresh the screen. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, this particular theme has this particular widget area. Other themes may have more. This particular theme came with a few different widgets built in. A different uh, theme might have different widgets. And then oftentimes, as we'll see in a little bit, plugins are a way to get more widgets. Before we get more widgets, let's see what we've got built in to work with. Honestly, these ones that are built in with basic WordPress are pretty, are pretty lame, honestly. They're not that interesting, they're not that useful. The calendar, again, you can't schedule anything, it, it's just so basic. Um, however, one of these built-in widgets is actually one of the most powerful ones, but it's very unassuming. Uh, it's this one here called Text. Drag this text widget into your widget area somewhere. I'm going to put it at the top just so that I can find it quickly. And, and so drag the text widget into the widget area, and it says it has three options. Title, an area to write text, and automatically add paragraphs. So just so that we can identify it, I'm going to call this text widget area. Just so that I can see it on the screen, I'm going to call it text widget area. And then in here I can write anything I want, so just write anything right here. Just write anything. Save it and visit the site. Don't worry about the check mark down there. I hardly ever use it. I don't really see any point to it. Just write something in the title and something in the text area. Save it. And then when I visit site after you refresh, I'm going to see, okay, text widget area. Whatever I wrote shows up there. And then you might say, well, why is this the most powerful widget? Notice it says arbitrary text or HTML. I can include any HTML code here. So if I go back to here and instead change something like t type this HTML code, if I type this HTML code here and here and I save it, WordPress will see that code and activate that code on my screen. So if I know any HTML or CSS and I write it here, WordPress will convert it and actually make it real code. So you don't have to do this, but what it did was now suddenly this text is, looks bigger and bolder compared to the previous. This, this is without the code. This is with the code, not a big difference. But if you know some code, some HTML or CSS, I'm just going to write something here to show it. You don't have to write it, but if you know any of this code, you can do this. There's no way for you to write to, to put the color pink there. There's no button to select pink. But I know a little code, and therefore I wrote the code, and it worked. We will talk about writing a little code a little later in part two of the class. But I'm just showing you here. This is why this is the most powerful widget. You can write any code here. How many of you have any experience in writing HTML code? A few people. So you can write your own code here. Well, let's say I don't have the experience. I don't know HTML code. Well, this is still a great and powerful widget because what about if I wanted to add a YouTube video to my site? YouTube gives you the code of a video which we can copy and paste and show it on our site. Let's do that right now. I'm going to add, I'm going to save that, I'm going to add another text widget. You can have more than one of these. I will add another text widget. So I've got my text widget, the first one that I was playing with. I've got a new one that I will call Watch My Video. 
And almost every site nowadays gives you what is known as the embed code. Embed code. Almost every site. YouTube, SoundCloud, almost every single site gives you some sort of embed code. And what we can do with that is copy it from one site into this site, and it'll show it. Question. Exactly. I'm going to drag another one because you can have more than one text. You can have more than one text widget. So drag the new text widget, and we're going to add a video in a moment here. Question. So with these text widgets, we can get the embed code and add a video, as we'll see. All right, so um, the embed code, let's, let's check this out. Let's go get a video off of YouTube. YouTube gives us the embed code, SoundCloud, Vimeo. All of these sites nowadays give us some sort of embed code, as we'll see here. Open another window or another tab, and let's go to YouTube.com. And we can take any of these videos, but let's take an educational one. I'm gonna, I went to YouTube. I'm going to search at the top here. Um, let's get this one. How to use Peach like a pro. This is a video that my company made about using the social network Peach. If you haven't heard of Peach, it's a network that came out in January. Yet another social network to learn. And so we've got a video that shows you how to use this. Let's borrow this or any video you like. If you've got a video, we can use it. But I'm on YouTube. Go ahead and search there how to use Peach Like a Pro. And you should see our video, which is PMD Interactive, right there. So basically, on any, on any video, this will work on any video. Click on the video. Life without rack. And you will see below the video the title of the video, and then you'll see share. Some sites have it as share, some of them say embed, some of them say code. It really ranges. It really varies. But on YouTube, any video, every video, by default, has a share ability. If it doesn't, that means someone turned it off. But by default, all videos on YouTube are shareable. Click on share. This is okay, great. Share it on Facebook or Google or what? No, I want to embed it. You click on share, you click on embed, and that's the code, HTML code. Copy that, paste it into your text widget, save it, and then you'll see that that video gets copied onto your site. Let's see, I'm going to paste it onto my text widget. I don't understand that code, but that's the code it gave me. Great, I'll just paste it and I'll save it. Refresh, and now I've got a video right on my sidebar. Hello everyone, this is Victor for PMD Interactive. Let's take a look at the latest Question? All right, so we've got a video there now. Question? Did you go back to visit site to see the result? 
you have to save it and then visit site and then you'll see on the sidebar the, the video. We call that a magic word. Magic words activate all sorts so of now I've got a video fun and interesting things to in my sidebar. Your space. It's a little small. Try to draw a magic but word. That's because right. of this particular here. theme has this particular size of that sidebar. The point is that I'm playing a video from from YouTube. Uh, any of these videos, any video from YouTube by default will have the ability that once you get that share, once you hit that share button and get that embed code, you can paste it into your text widget. That's why this is the most powerful widget. This text widget lets you put in any valid code. Um, so think about this for maybe an affiliate link. Maybe you've got some sort of affiliate system, maybe Amazon affiliates or, I don't know, Mary Kay or something, and they give you a code. Put this code on your site to make a little money off of it. So this is where you would put it. Uh, as a text widget, copy and paste, save it, and then now they'll see that. Uh, here's an example on one of my sites. On, on my blog, I might have mentioned it on a previous day, uh, one of my hobbies is comic books. I've been, I read and collect comic books. And so I've got articles about comic books. But on the side then, I've got an ad. Here's a YouTube ad. If someone clicks on that, I make a little money off of that. If someone reads one of my articles, and then sees the ad there on the side, and then they're interested, they click on it, I make a little money. This is how people make money off of their websites, one way. You see these ads on, on websites, it's because they make a little money off of those ads. Now, I try to not make it super intrusive like a bunch of these other ones, uh, but that's, that's another reason why this widget is the most powerful one, because I've got a WordPress site, I've got a sidebar, I've got a YouTube account, and so I've got that code in there, and if someone clicks that, and that seems valuable. Grow your business on YouTube. I want to learn how to do that. Someone clicks, I make a little money off of that. That's a whole big discussion about how do you make money off of YouTube uh, for another class, my social media class. I might have mentioned it in this class or not, but uh, Fridays, I teach a social media class. This Friday, I'm teaching the class on YouTube, how to make money off of YouTube. It's 9.15 a.m. this Friday, room 209. This is social media. It is part two. You missed part one. It is day four, day four, YouTube, part two. So yes, you did miss several things if you come today, but everyone's welcome. And it's uh, how to use YouTube uh, for monetization monetization. How to make money off of YouTube. That's this Friday, 9.15 a.m. So when are you posting your blog to your site? In room 209. What's that? When are you posting your blog site? On YouTube itself or on Well, this is on my own GoDaddy account, and then these videos, I'm putting them on YouTube. And that's what I would recommend. I would recommend people get a website on Bluehost or, you, or GoDaddy or Squarespace, whatever. Get a website at one of these companies, which we'll talk about later, and then put your videos on YouTube. Uh, Space don't, uh, on don't top of RAW infrastructure don't would them not to be your own site want. because these videos take a lot of space. Videos slow down your site. Why not use the Hello free everyone, YouTube, for which has infinite space, Let's take a infinite look at the speed, latest and just link it network. from your YouTube account to your to your website? And that's not going to take up the space was if I go back to the on my site. The top right and I go into help and more, you can embed this multimedia onto your site. Showing that this latest version of Peach Peach. Start typing a magic. So that's usually what I do with my sites and my clients' sites we found that it's uh, much easier to do that because YouTube is great. You upload a high-quality video here and YouTube will automatically show people 
the medium quality one, the low quality one, the high quality one, the mobile friendly version, the 4K version, whatever. It will show the right version of the video to the right person. In the old days, I had to upload a high quality version to my site, a medium version, and a low quality, and then write some code for it to show the right one when someone visited. Question. How when we came click the website, how did your company come first? You mean, what, why did my company's logo come here? This was a video that we created and we designed it with, with, uh, Hello, uh, with the video is editor. PMB Interactive. Yes, let's this is take a look at the We created this video as a tutorial on how to use network. So we designed it completely and with Photoshop, peach. with Movie Maker, this is the peach social network. And at the moment, it's only available for iOS devices. Uh, so YouTube is one place where you can store your multimedia, specifically video. Let me make a note here and then I'll save this note in the network folder later. Advice for multimedia. store multimedia on third-party servers and then embed onto your site. So upload your videos to YouTube and then just embed it. Take the code and embed it onto your site. <clears throat> that doesn't slow down your site like it would if you've got it uploaded to your site. It doesn't take up your server space like it would. I'm going to say YouTube for video. There's also another one called Vimeo. Mm -hmm. That one's also for video. So it's another place to upload videos if you'd like. We've got SoundCloud for audio. What sort of audio might you want to put on a website? What if I'm a musician and I want to play my music on my site and I don't want to deal with the server space and all of that. I can put my music up on SoundCloud. Another one of audio is called Bandcamp. So again, I can put my audio up there and I can even, they have a whole infrastructure like Bandcamp has an infrastructure where you can sell your music there too. Uh, okay, well let's say you're not a musician. Uh, have you heard of these things called podcasts? Yeah. If you haven't heard of a podcast, it's basically an on-demand internet radio. So instead of tuning in at a certain day and time, you can hear the show anytime you want. After it's been uploaded, you can download it and hear it whenever you want. You don't have to tune in Monday nights at 7 p.m. You can download it and listen to it whenever you want. So podcasts. Uh, might be a thing to think about to add to your site. Obviously, that's a really big answer to give you about what's a podcast, how do you make a podcast, and all that. I don't have time. And there's no class for that, unfortunately. But look up online. How do I make a podcast? And you'll find a million tutorials. But this is one possibility for marketing. Um, you can make podcasts every week. You can record a 10-minute show, five minutes. You can record yourself the social media minute. Take out your phone and then I can record. Okay, everyone, I'm going to talk about Twitter and what you want to do on Twitter is blah, blah, blah. And talk about one minute. And then upload it to SoundCloud and link it to your site. You've got a podcast. That's it. You don't have to be very special or professional. Maybe add some music and this and that, whatever. That's more complex. But the podcast is something that you're creating and sharing. It's sound. And the point of that is someone, if someone really likes your podcast, they can share it and get you more more listeners, more audience, more traffic, more sales, whatever you're trying to do online. What if I'm Victor's Bakery and once a month I'm going to talk with one of the chefs in my, in my uh, kitchen for 10 minutes, 5 minutes. And we're going to talk about what's good in the world of, of uh, you know, culinary, in the culinary world. We talk, you know, shoot the breeze for 5 minutes, post it, and then maybe that goes viral. Who knows? Maybe I do it for 4 months and one of them gets lots of hits. Success. I got more listeners, 
I got more traffic, maybe. I got more sales, maybe. But uh, the point here is that adding multimedia to your website, not just pictures and text. Do you have any video? Do you have any audio? Here's another one. Slideshare.net, I believe. This one is for presentations. PowerPoints. What about thinking about, let's say I am a, a tax preparer. Tax season just ended, but let's say I'm a tax preparer and I want to get more clients. One possible way is to do free advertising, which is I can go on slideshare.net. I can create a simple three or five or ten slide PowerPoint saying the top three IRS mistakes and just create a quick PowerPoint, five slides, post it on SlideShare. This is thousands of viewers, maybe millions of viewers, and someone could see your presentation, especially during tax time, and say, this person knows what he's talking about, and I don't, so maybe I'll hire them. And I can do the same thing here. I can go to SlideShare, put my presentation there, use their servers, get the embed code, paste it onto my site as a text widget, and I've got my presentation on my site without it taking up the space. And the cool thing about most of these is that when, you wa when someone watches one of your videos, it's going to suggest for them to watch another one of your videos. When someone sees one of your slides, one of your presentations, it's going to say, why not also see the next one? And you can capture more people's attention. Um, so, you know, SoundCloud, just briefly, SoundCloud.com, people upload music, presentations, podcasts, whatever, and these have the embed code. Yes, I've got an account here also for my comic book hobby, SoundCloud.com slash VMCampos, and there I just uploaded an episode uh, today episode 13. So this is, uh, this is free and you upload your video, uh, your, your podcast, people can, can play it. So this previous episode had 18 plays, you know, I'm not famous on this, but 14 listens on this, 26 on that. What's the point? I am putting affiliate links in these podcasts. I like to talk about comics and I want to make a little money off of it. I put affiliate links there. Follow these links, go buy that book, I get a little bit from Amazon. So affiliate marketing, this is how people make money on online. Get your Amazon affiliate link, uh, your YouTube one, Mary Kay, Amway, whatever, get your affiliate links from these companies, spread that, those links everywhere, and that's how you make some money online. So that's why this is the most powerful plugin. Yeah, it's plain text, but it's HTML. Any, any valid HTML goes here. You can write your own, or most of us that don't know it, get that embed code, add it to our site, and use it. So how much money is it making out of that HTML? It really depends, but on YouTube, for example, this YouTube account of this YouTube account of our of our company, we don't have a lot of videos yet, but it's pulling in at about like ten dollars a month. It's not a lot in the grand scheme of things. That buys me like one and a half lattes, but uh, you know, putting in putting these videos and letting them go, and some of them get a lot of views, and some of them don't, and you never know. And yeah, time is money, and then maybe we're putting way too much effort into these, but, you know, it builds. There's some people on YouTube, honestly, that can make thousands of dollars a month, tens of thousands of dollars a month off of YouTube videos. I don't know anyone in the real world that does that, but I read plenty of articles about YouTube personalities that are rich off of YouTube. And all of these things, Amazon affiliates. I haven't made any money off of Amazon yet. People have been clicking but not buying yet. It's very hard to click that buy button, it seems. So it can really vary. You can make a couple of dollars a month, tens of 
dollars a month or tens of thousands of dollars. It really ranges. Uh, so, the text widget. Any questions on that? Where did you get the affiliate link? Where do you click when you go to your site? Get the which one? The you have the Amazon thing, the link. These links? On your podcast, when you go to SoundCast. Uh-huh. These links right here. These links you get, yeah. you, you have to create, uh, you have to look up. I got, I think the page after that, what do you do? Where do you click? Click on an episode. So click on one of the titles of one of the, oh, one of the episodes. Oh, okay. And then that'll show the description. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll we'll talk about uh, uh, plugins because this is a limited amount of widgets that are built in. I want to get more widgets, perhaps, and those are going to be plugins. So it's uh, one fifty-one. We'll be back at two o one in ten minutes.